which honestly, on a first listen, I don't really do very often. I know it's probably a better way to listen, but um, I just usually am doing something else. I don't really have the desire or time to just listen to the music and stare at the wall or something. <laughs> usually I'm on my phone or on my computer or something um, while listening. But this album really like just completely took my attention. Um, so I think it's important to know a little bit about the context of the band um, leading into this album because I think it does play a role in the analysis of this, this group and this album. So the lead uh, singer and songwriter of the group, Isaac Wood, um, announced that he was leaving the group due to mental health reasons a couple days before this album came out, um, which, you know, if you're, I'm sure if you're a fan, was kind of a devastating thing to hear because um, he, <laughs> um, he really does contribute a lot to this group. I will say everyone else seems great too, like the instrumentalists are, are fantastic, but I mean, he is the centerpiece, really. He's what ties it all together and creates something um, fantastic, honestly. If you were to ask me how the band would do without their lead singer and lead songwriter, I, I would not say, <laughs> I honestly would not be very happy about that. It's, it, there's a lot of bands that kind of became devastated by a loss of a key member. Um, but you know, also there's groups like New Order who came out of Joy Division and made something new and completely different. Um, that was also great in its own way. So I, I'm not going to say the group is doomed because of the loss of their lead singer, um, but it definitely is going to be a change and it definitely impacts the listening of this album. Um, and it's sad. It's interesting to think about, um, him leaving for mental health reasons, you know? There's a lot of cases throughout art history um, of artists basically thus working to the death of themselves. Um, and I'll say in, in general, the fascination with that has kind of encouraged it, I would say. It, it definitely has. Um, people like to listen to the extreme and raw emotions that artists create, um, whether it be through movie or music or uh, art, actual art. I can't say I'm not one of them <laughs> because I also really enjoy listening to music that kind of displays like this powerful um, sadness or depression or anger. Um, oh, the previously mentioned Joy Division is one of them um, whose lead singer, you know, he, he put everything into his music. Um, all this depression and sadness, and it created a lot of great music, but he ended up killing himself. So, and, and that's just like such a tragedy. And it's just funny that I'm saying that it's such a tragedy. I didn't know him. Um, I didn't, I didn't know, I don't know Isaac Wood either. Um, I think in a lot of ways, as music consumers, we see the loss of the music <laughs> as a bigger deal than the loss of the musician which I think can be a dangerous thing. Um, you know, an artist that I've frequently talked about, um, Kanye West, is probably the prime example of this. He, he has displayed everything um, going on in his life through social media and through his music. And I can't deny that I'm kind of like an addict for that display of emotion. It connects with me. Um, in a way, I'm glad I don't experience <laughs> Um, so in a way it's a, it's a relatable fascination. I think that's really what creates this strong connection for a lot of people. Um, when, when they listen to a group like Black Country New Road or even Kanye and so many other artists, seeing them kind of struggle, um, makes them feel like everything's going to be okay in their own lives. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's why a lot of these artists have such, um, devout followings. But it, in a way, you know, I, I think it's interesting to look at the fact that I feel like the loss of this group is the loss of this group's um, central songwriter as important as the loss of possible loss of human life from his life, you know. Um, I think a lot of people would say that what you create and the art that you create, um, it's, its ability to live beyond um, a human life makes it more important than 
staying alive. And I think a lot of artists, you know, work themselves to death with that, with that in mind. Which is, well, I don't know, is it sad? One of the biggest kind of examples throughout history of um, one of these artists who kind of kills themselves through their work is uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, who is another figure I find really fascinating um, due to his, how he, he used his personal struggle um, to create meaningful and beautiful art. Um, yeah, and I, I think this goes to show that this isn't something new, this fascination with artists um, that work themselves to death through their music, who view their lives as less important than what they create. Um, and in a way, it, it's sad that people end up, that there are people who end up thinking that their music is more important than themselves. Um, and that's something that I think I, I can personally relate with. I've spent a lot of time in my life contemplating and kind of feeling bad for myself for not creating something um, and instead enjoying myself a lot of the time. And that's something that I spend a lot of time like feeling bad about. Like, why am I just sitting around, sometimes listening to music, instead of going out and using what I have to create something? Um, as I'm getting older, I also consider that when looking at like kind of the up and comers who um, are creating such like excellent genre defining work, um, and they're so young. I've, I've reached the age now where. Some of those people are younger than me at this point. Um, and there's like a guilt associated with that too. Um, the guilt of just being like, well, why am I not making myself known? I think we're kind of like conditioned to think that that's really important, that you need to do something with your life in order to it, for it to be worthwhile. Um, and you know, I'm not going to tell you that if you believe that, that that's not true. Um, because it's a reasonable thing to think. I, I, I definitely commend anyone who, who works for that ambition, like that's their goal in life. And you know what, I will be here to observe it and be really happy to observe it and to relate with it. Uh, but something I've like kind of come to terms with or been trying to come to terms with at least is the idea that just being is okay. I'm not wasting my time by enjoying myself. Um, and that I shouldn't feel pressure to 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 do something like that unless I want to. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time writing um, and you know thinking and talking with people um, in a way I find satisfactory to my desire to express myself, um, and that's okay. Um, that's okay for that to be all of it. You know, I'm making <laughs> these YouTube videos now, which I'm really excited to be doing, but I'm not, I'm trying to remember, I'm not in it for the views, really. I'm in it because it's something I want to do. Um, and I feel like as long as you keep that in mind, you will always succeed, no matter what the reaction from everyone else is. Um, and, you know, it, it goes to show, should Isaac have stuck with the group to continue to make fantastic music like this built on his sadness and depression. I think he also, I, I can't speak for him, but I imagine there's a lot of guilt he feels for, for stepping away from from all these like adoring fans as well as his bandmates um, to address something that still has scrutinized mental health. Um, a lot of people would probably still think like, oh, just get over it. Um, this is more important. Which... I can understand that's something that really affects his psyche. So I really do, as a person, I admire him for stepping out of the group um, because that's what he felt he had to do. Really, it's an extremely brave thing to do. Um, and I hope he is coming to terms with the idea that his life is more important than his art to him. It should be. Um... And yeah, I, I know I haven't really talked that much about the actual album, but I do think this context is important um, when listening to the album. Something I really enjoyed about their last album is the kind of twisting of pop culture into their lyrics. 
Um, and they do that again here. There's a lot of really weird metaphors um, that Isaac uses on this album, which I really like. Um, the track I talked about earlier, Bread Song, talks about um, the idea of getting crumbs in um, your partner's bed, um, which is just a weird piece of imagery. I mean, I I don't think most people are eating toast in, in their partner's beds. I don't think that's a common problem, but the way it's used to kind of analyze, like, the breaking of his relationship, um, I think is really interesting. A lot of other songs, um, when it comes to the pop culture references, there's actually two um, associated with Billie Eilish on this album. On the track Chaos Space Marine, we're talking about Billie Eilish style. Um, I think it really, it, it plays the same role as I was talking about um, from the references on their last album, where they're kind of skewing together these pop culture references um, to kind of show that that is defining them in a lot of ways, defining this generation in a lot of ways, um, kind of using people to, and, and styles of others to create your own personality, um, and having us kind of dwell on that and think about how that affects us and we're for, if we're okay with that. Um, there's a lot of other metaphors that I find interesting on this album, like the idea of the clamp um, and the character Concord that is kind of referenced throughout the album as Isaac's um, significant other that he is losing over the course of this album. Um, and he, it's, it's, this album is in a lot of ways... Um, talking about two kinds of love, again, similar to what I was saying with the Mitski album, kind of the the loss of a loved one in his significant other, and the loss of like this love of music, um, and how the hype has kind of affected that. Another reference that is significant on this album is the reference to Charlie XCX in the final track, Basketball Shoes, um, which I also find really intriguing, kind of like this this fetishization of Charlie XCX um, on this last track, talking about kind of like this, um, these these thoughts about her. Um, and in a way, I, I, I saw a lot of people talking about these lyrics and being kind of disgusted by them and thinking they're just like really uncomfortable. Um, but I think they're pretty admirable in a way. They're very honest. And I think this is another example of like kind of pop culture coming to being twisted into um, this generation um, in a way that no one really understands. The fascination with celebrity has kind of implications that no one has really been talking about. Um, and you know, the, the what, what's going on in the track basketball shoes in regards to Charlie XCX is not uncommon at all. Like this kind of like turning celebrities into um, these idols instead of people is extremely common and I think social media and um, just how interconnected everything is has really made that even more has stressed that even more and I do think that kind of relates back to what I was saying earlier about Isaac kind of part of his depression and part of what made him leave the group is kind of this obsession with celebrity something I mentioned in my uh, top 15 video when talking about this group is how much I love their theatrical talent. Isaac is an extremely strong vocalist. Um, and even if you are excusing his vocal talent and his vocal range, um, what's really important to me is his ability to express his emotions through his voice. Um, you know, you can be as good a singer as Adele, but if you're not selling what you're, what you're feeling, then it doesn't really matter. But I also don't want to discount the instrumentalists. All of the instrumentals are crazy. I mean, I think most people would compare them to post-rock groups like uh, Godspeed You Black Emperor, and particularly um, the group Slint, who who are a very interesting group. I mean, you definitely feel the um, the inspiration these guys have from Slint when looking at their album Spiderland and looking at this stuff. Um, but I think they do something new with it. They take it to the next level. And it's just kind of crazy to think <laughs> in 30 years, no one 
has really been able to capture that sound, that very unique sound that Slint had um, until these guys, which is crazy. They really are doing something exciting and new in rock music. Um, and yeah, I think that pretty much sums up my thoughts on the album. I definitely recommend you checking it out if all of this sounds interesting to you. If you're a fan of rock music, this is probably the, the, the most exciting rock album I, since I don't even know. Um, on an initial listen, this doesn't really happen very often, but I was really feeling just like a 10 out of 10 on this album. Um, and that hasn't happened since To Pip a Butterfly. Um, <laughs> so, you know, this, this for me personally, this goes in a pretty elite camp. Um, of course, no opinion is final. I'm going to see how uh, my feelings change on it throughout the year and uh, beyond that too. But this album has really got me thinking a lot um, and feeling a lot. I don't know where Black Country New Road are going to go from here. And, you know, maybe it's selfish to be sad that their music won't be led by Isaac. But... I think as a person, I want to say that I'm happy that he has left the group, if that's what he thinks he needs to do, because I think that's more important. Art may define what we remember about humanity, but I think remembering isn't as important as a lot of people think it is, making a name for yourself. I think you're more important than the name you make for yourself. It sums up my feelings on this album. Um, pretty much a little messy. I went kind of back and forth trying to talk about the music as well as um, the themes. But I definitely recommend this album. And yeah, 10 out of 10 for me. Um, as for future videos, I'm going to do something on the new Kanye album whenever that comes out. Um, but besides that, I don't have any immediate plans. Um, if anyone has any ideas for something they'd like to see, be sure to drop a comment and hopefully I, I will consider doing it. But yeah, if you made it all the way through the video to this point, I really appreciate you watching. Um, and you know, if you only watch like five minutes of it too, that, that's also fine. I still appreciate you giving it a shot. Um, and yeah, I hope you'll give this album a shot too. So yeah. Goodbye guys, I'll see you next time.